Oh, good day again. Good day. Huntley is just down that road. You can't miss it. I know. We just found out that the people we've been looking for aren't there anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Do you know what happened to the owners of that burned down house down the road? It's not Simon you're looking for, is it? Why, yes. A while ago, some knights came to his house, nasty bunch. Burned it down, said he was part of some scheme against the king, like his brother, the Earl. What happened to Simon and his wife? To know, haven't seen any of them since. I understand. Thank you. What are you doing? Getting all the work done. My wife is ill, so I have to do it alone. Needs to be done by nightfall, otherwise I won't get them to Winchester tomorrow. Why are you asking? We were supposed to live here with our uncle and aunt, but since they're gone, we need to find another way to get by. My prayers are with you. We could help you shear your sheep. Nah, never let a stranger handle your flock. Besides, I have nothing to pay you with. We're penniless. We could take the wool to Winchester for you. You could stay at home and look after your wife while we sell your stock. Well, that would be kind of you. But I couldn't trust you to negotiate the right price and bring the money back safely. What if I bought the wool from you? You'd get the money right now and wouldn't have to go to market anymore. And whatever more we can negotiate will be the pay for our travels. Well, that's an interesting thought. But for that to work, you would need to buy my entire stock, and I doubt you have coin for that. Now let me get back to work. The sun will set soon. How much for one sack? Just name your price. One and a half pounds. I want to see the wool first. All right, have a look. Let's see. Huh, these fleeces are quite thin. I put the cheap ones on top, in case of rain. Mm, the ones deeper down don't look that much better. Well, I couldn't wait for the wool to grow any thicker. My family is hungry and weak. I had to shear my sheep early this year. All right. I can give you one pound and sixty pence. Nah. Well, all right. Throw me the coin. I'll finish shearing old Mabel here, then bring out the rest I've got. Maybe you also want to talk to the other shepherds around here. They might want to sell too. Ah, all right. Thank you. By the way, there is a man looking for you. He came by just shortly after you. I told him you went to Huntley. What man? Dunno. Brown scruffy hair, beard, black horse. Could be he rode right past you. That old hut is not easy to find. Shall I give him a message if he turns up again? Tell him we left Huntley for good. I will. Now let me get those sacks for you. I wonder what Richard will think of this. What did we do wrong, Ali? Why is God punishing us?
We will get through this. If we came this far, we'll get even further. We just need to stay strong and be patient. But there is nowhere for us to go. We're commoners now. Commoners who never learned to do common work and... We both swore an oath to Father. If we don't get the Elden back, we will go to hell. We could become wool merchants. What do we know about wool? We know from Meg that a lot of shepherds complain about their walk to Winchester. What if we did that for them? And what about me becoming a knight? Uncle Simon's not the only one who'd take you as a squire. If we collected enough money, we could pay another knight to teach you. It might work. Right? We've had some bad luck till now, but surely not everyone is a fiend. It'll take some time, but we should be able to gradually increase our income. All we need to do is have a lot of patience and pray to God. Ah! Richard! Lord Amity caught me riding the horse you stole from him. Ah! He told me before I take you back, I can have some fun with you. Ah! Get away from him! Ah! <gasps> Richard! Richard, are you all right? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> You're alive! Why are you crying? <laughs> because... Because we are both alive. Looking back, We'd been lucky that his bones hadn't been broken, and that his ear had healed so quickly after we had burned out the wound. Otherwise, I'm not certain my brother would have survived the attack in Huntley. Once he could walk again, we gathered the few things we had and headed out, counting our blessings and preparing to build ourselves a new life. How's your wound doing? Don't worry, I'm fine. May I ask what you're planning to do with all that wool? Mind showing me a piece of your stock? I'd like to establish the quality before I make any promises. Come on, I need to check the quality. I won't take some without your permission. I'll negotiate when you show me a sample of your wool. Hmm, not bad. That's quite some wool you've brought along. I hope you're not planning to set up shop here, too. Meg would kill me if I let you. We came to sell this wool to you, not to compete with you. It comes from the shepherds near Huntley. They gave it to me so they wouldn't have to come here themselves. I see. All right. I'll give you a pound per sack for this. What? Only a pound? Ah, that's a fair price. But I paid more for this. I'd sell at a loss. Hmm. How much did you pay? One and a quarter pounds per sack. It was almost all I had. 
The rest I had to spend on the cart and the toll at the gate. <sighs> then you let yourself be overcharged. What? I can't pay for your mistakes, can I? You have to handle that yourself. Ali, let me handle this. Your money would not only pay for the war, but also fund our fight to reclaim our earldom. If you pay us more, I shall never forget that courtesy, and will greatly repay you once I'm back in charge of Shiring. I may even allow you sole access to our own wool production. That's a lofty promise. And it would hardly cost you. So, you two are the son and daughter of the Earl of Shiring? We are. But you're just children. We will make a coin, and I will become a knight fighting for glory and honor until the king grants us back our noble inheritance. <sighs> that may all be very well, but I can't pay you more than what I already offered. Then I'll prove that the wool's quality is worth the price. Just let me look at it once more. <sighs> We've got to work out what signifies high quality. Maybe if we remember what the shepherd said. It's from a good breed of sheep, they said. What else? Um... And other wool looked greasy, not ours. It's dry, light and soft. The wool is pretty strong too. It holds together well. That's all I remember. Yeah, me too. Hmm. Have you thought it over? One pound and sixty pence per sack. Come on, that's close enough to one pound. Just take the pound. One pound and ten shilling per sack, then. As I told you before, my mistress gave me clear instructions. I can give you one pound and nothing more. Some sheep produce brittle fibre, but this wool is strong. Its sheep had good, healthy lives. Mm hmm, it's suitable for finer and durable fabrics. In this weather, some cartloads of wool would arrive damp. I made sure that this is dry and undamaged. It's light and easy to transport. Mm, and customers are hesitant to buy wet wool. Wool is often full of grease and dirt. But this batch was scoured very thoroughly. It's very clean and soft. Hmm, even picky customers would be delighted. That is true. All right, what pricing did you have in mind? Two pounds per sack. Are you insane? That's a little too much. I'd hardly pay that much for a golden fleece. One pound and ten shilling per sack, then. <sighs> well, tell you what, I'll give you one and a quarter pounds for every sack. You've brought up some good arguments. Your wool is exquisite. Of course it is. Ah, uh, but not a penny more, all right? Yes, agreed. One and a quarter pounds it is. Very good. Just so you know, if my mistress gets angry, I'll have you tell her the same things you told me. Thank you for your business. We've done it, Ali. 
Well, we've received as much as we paid. But at least I negotiated a better price. I know why Meg likes you, Aliena. You're just as ruthless as her. Don't be so hard on yourself. My friend, Milius, says that a good bargain needs a lot of foresight and experience. Can I help you? Forgive me, I didn't mean to barge in, but... You are the Lady Aliena of Shiring, are you not? Yes, I am. And I'm Lord Richard, Earl Bartholomew's son. My name is Philip of Gwyneth. I am the Prior of Kingsbridge. Ah, oh, I've heard of you. You helped a lot of people after the Hamleys attacked my father's castle. We only did what was right. I met your father. My father knew many people. Not all of them were his allies. I know. I'd like to invite you to come to Kingsbridge. Our own wool trade has fallen somewhat into neglect, God forgive, but we have plenty of sheep. I am sure we could come to an agreement. You want us to be merchants? But I sold at a loss. You wouldn't work for me. You would work with me. I can see that you are not afraid of hard work. I don't know a single novice who would have been willing to pull a cart like that on his own. You may have made losses, but that only means there is more to learn for you. My friend, Brother Milius, would be delighted to speak with you. He always goes to markets for our priory. What do you say? I'll consider it. Please, do consider my offer. You will be most welcome in Kingsbridge. It is the least I can do. Thank you, Father. Not much later, I found a home in Kingsbridge. I remember when I got there, there was Jack. You! I remember you! You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. And then the days just went by. Little did I know that the best and the worst was yet to come. So, you have returned from Rome, Bishop Whaleran. Yes, it was a very illuminating time. What do you want? The Pope was very pleased to hear how I and you have worked together in the past to support our king. We did not do it for your church. He was less pleased, however, to hear about the bargain you struck with the Prior of Kingsbridge. Why should he care? Once and for all, we will not support you in your personal quarrels. The deal we made with the Priory of Kingsbridge has the blessing of the King. Of course, and you would never change your mind on that matter. Tell me, has your son returned from the Holy Land yet? We have not heard from him, ever since he set out to join that crusade of yours. If he dies, your church will be responsible. Do not underestimate your son, Lady Hamley. That would be a great mistake. Not long now and you'll have a ceiling. Wonderful. Then we will no longer have to hold our services in the crypt. You could even begin to plan the paintings for the wooden ceiling and the walls. Why a wooden ceiling? So the whole thing goes up in flames again? 
Philip decided on that because it's cheaper. And these walls can only hold the weight of a wooden ceiling. I love you like a brother, Alfred, but the apprentice shouldn't have to tell the master craftsman things like that. Jack, for once, focus on your work and finish it. Just for once. Or you'll stay an apprentice for the rest of your life. Don't argue again. Alfred is right. This is a house of God. <sighs> All right. Now, where were we? You could start planning the paintings for the ceiling, if you wish. Can we afford that at the moment? We are paying so many workers already. Father Philip. Tom Builder. Alfred. Ah, Aliena. How are you? I'll be moving my wool to Shiring today. The Fleece Fair starts tomorrow. Ah, I almost forgot. Milius and I have already arranged everything. We'd make much more of a profit if Percy Hamley had not raised the taxes this week. Again? Ugh. Ugh. Jonathan, you shouldn't wander off. Stay with us. Tom is right. You hear? He looks like a real monk. Omnius Plovius. Nominee Patri Amen. That sounds like Latin, but it's not quite right yet. We would not have to worry about this if we could sell our wool here on our market. The king would have to grant us a license for that. And the Hamleys wouldn't like that, I'm afraid. They want the taxes from the fair in Shiring. Don't worry. We'll make a good profit. It's a good year. We've never moved this much wool as it is. Oh, and I have to build a new storage house. Alfred is a master craftsman now. If you can pay him, he'll help you. Ah, very good. If she hadn't a business of her own, I'd hire her to work for me. <laughs> she is something. She would make me a good wife. Hey! Hey, take that back! <laughs> what? What did I say? For the last time, stop your quarrelling! Philip, let's look at the plans again. There's a problem I have to discuss with you. All right. Take that back, Alfred. Jack, leave him alone. And for once, finish your work. And Jack, please keep an eye on Jonathan, will you? What? Why me? <laughs> Finish your work, Jack. <laughs> That's how it always was. But on that day, I didn't care. On that day, I was going to see Aliena. And I was going to tell her how I felt. And nothing and no one would stop me. Time to get this done.
nice. For some reason, I'm full of energy today. <laughs> mm. But the face still isn't right. I can never get the face right. I'm done for now. I just can't stand looking at it anymore. Oh, damn. Watch your tongue. I will. I need to get much better at this. I'm done for now. I just can't stand look. I would like to continue working on this one, but Tom said I'm not.